Oh, you look cheesy. Cheers. 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 Nate started taking medication for autism when he was around five years old. As Nate was getting into high school, the aggression levels just really started spiraling out of control. He randomly started running into other classrooms, punching people for nothing. It took four adult men and handcuffs to bring him down to the ground, cuff him, and restrain him. At that time, he was taking 18 pills every single day, and it wasn't even helping. I started researching the medical marijuana states. We were able to come to California. I remembered seeing like the big neon cannabis leaf in the window and like, well, that's gotta be where we have to go. <laughs> Why don't you just tell me a little bit about your family history? Yeah, so my mom's side is from Mexico. My dad's side is from Mexico. Okay. My name is Jenny May. I have three sons on the autism spectrum. Each child is, of course, so different, like any other child. And as far as them being on the spectrum, Nathan is what is considered to be at the very severe end. And rather than trying to find the right medication, they just gave more and more and more of it. And that was really the only solution they had. I did not want him being chemically restrained in a bed, you know, being taken care of by strangers. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had come across this little video clip of a young boy who was just repeatedly punching himself in the head. 11-year-old Alex Eccles is severely autistic. His self-destructive behavior brought on by... And it, it caught my attention because it was something that Nate had done. His parents were talking about giving some kind of an oil. I was confused because it sounded like it was a, some kind of a marijuana derivative. And I was actually shocked and maybe even a little bit disgusted. And after a few months of treatment, the Eccles say they saw a dramatic improvement. Within just a few minutes of this boy taking the oil orally, he was smiling and he was calm and he wasn't hurting himself anymore. And I'm like, wait, what, what just happened there? I watched it a few more times and I was completely shocked and desperate. At that point, Jenny and her family just moved from Wisconsin to Missouri. Two states were getting pot legally for really any reason is super difficult but particularly medical cannabis to treat autism. Currently only 12 states include autism as a qualifying condition. Five other states in the District of Columbia are considered autism friendly, meaning doctors can recommend medical cannabis for debilitating conditions. So that leaves 33 states where you can't access medical cannabis to treat autism at all. I was raised in the Nancy Reagan, just say no era. Say no to drugs and say yes to life. I would have never in my life considered this to be a medicine, but I basically told my husband, we have to try that. Like most illicit drugs, the scientific and medical research of marijuana has been challenging, but the tide appears to be turning. The first large-scale clinical trial is underway at Montefiore Medical Center in New York City, and it may be the key to unlocking access to treatment for children with autism nationwide. Dr. Eric Hollander is leading that study. I've been involved in uh, research developing new therapies, new treatments, in autism spectrum disorders for about 30 years. And there's a big need to develop treatments for the core symptoms of autism. This study focuses on a new compound called cannabidivarian, or CBDV. It's an extract from the cannabis plant similar to CBD. It doesn't include THC, the psychoactive drug that gets you high, and what Jenny uses to treat Nate. But it's the first step in studying cannabis to treat autism. This particular cannabinoid has effects on some of the underlying mechanisms that we think are central to autism, the problem behaviors, the disruptive behaviors, and also in some of the, the compulsive behaviors or repetitive behaviors or perseverative behaviors. So it gets at a key mechanism that we think is important. There is reason to be optimistic. This new CBDV-based drug is similar to one that's already been approved by the FDA to treat a severe form of epilepsy that shares some of the same symptoms that Dr. Hollander is studying. This new research could help cement what has largely been anecdotal support of using cannabis to treat autism. But while that research is ongoing, parents like Jenny are moving to states that have more lax marijuana laws. For Jenny and her family, that meant packing up everything and moving all the way across the country. That decision may sound extreme, but for Jenny and Nate, it's been worth it. Their lives have been transformed since first visiting a dispensary. We got home and he took a hit immediately. 
We got this, huh? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And within not even five minutes, it was just like a light switch. He was happy and just kind of looking around like he had never seen the world in that way. And he was smiling and looking at me. And I just knew right away because nothing acted that quickly or that positively ever. Jenny has learned a lot since moving her family out to California. There she joined forces with fellow mom Rhonda to start the nonprofit Whole Plan Access for Autism. Now it's a team of moms dedicating their lives to helping other families navigate the challenges that come with getting cannabis for their autistic kids. I feel like we get a lot of people that come to our booth. Someone in their lives has been touched by autism and they don't know that this is an option for them. Oftentimes we get people that you know come to us after the event, you know, they email us or they find us on social media and they want to learn. And that's kind of what we're about. We're about educating. We decided to take a drive out to Joshua Tree. I had him vape and take an edible right before we left the house. He saw that I was taking pictures and most of the other pictures that I've ever taken him in his life, it was kind of a vacant stare. He wouldn't really look, he wouldn't really smile. And he ran over in front of me and sat down. He sat there and he posed for a picture like everybody else would in a situation like that. And I, I just, I'm like, that's it. That's basically his birth picture. You shouldn't have to go through the whole gamut of medications and side effects and long-term consequences of some of those side effects in order to get to it. Just look at cannabis as another tool in your tool belt to try. Thanks for watching. For more Dope Science content, check out our website and subscribe to Freethink for more great videos every week. If you want to learn more about what Jenny and Rhonda are doing with a nonprofit, you can go to their website, which is wpa4a.org.